The Naval News team is at ADEX 2021 to provide a Navy-focused look on the event. So without further ado, let's go. So the aircraft you see behind me is the Kai Suryot. It's South Korea's first domestically developed helicopter and was first supplied to the Army in 2009. Right now there are 148 units in service with the Raft Army. Variants of the Suryon have been designed for the Navy as well and it's called the Marine One. So behind me is the Kai Marine One. It's based off the Kai Suryon and it's designed for use by the Navy and Marine Corps can carry a maximum of nine people. It's the aircraft that the armed Marine One is based off of. Right, we're at the Korean Aerospace Industries booth in Addicts, in front of the armed variant of the Marine One. Can you explain to us the capabilities of the aircraft and uh, what mission it is designed to carry out? Right, you mean this one, right? Yes. So we're preparing to offer two versions of MAH. First of all, it's called MAH, Marine Attack Helicopter. So version one is, it will be equipped with AGM, air-to-ground missile, and air-to-air -air missile, and the rocket launcher or on the right side, left side. But this one is for level two. These are canisters, and that one is a UAV that we're preparing to put inside of it. So their main mission is to protect the Marine Corps, those who directly go to the enemy base. So the main mission is to protect our soldiers. Right. Thank you very much. Next to the Marine One, there's another very interesting little aircraft. Can you explain to us what this aircraft is and what it's been designed to do? Well, this platform, this basic platform is meant to be used for multi mission, multi man on man teaming. And the pilots or helicopter or everyone else in the ground will communicate with this UAV. In US, I heard that it's called ALE, Air Launch Impact. So we can easily understand heliborne air impact. So their mission is to uh, reconnaissance or suicide mission or anti, I don't know, every mission that it can do. And our mission is to make fly more than two hours and it can fly like 150 kilometers per hour. And we can put a three kilogram of grenade any missile thing on here so that you can suicide when it's an uh, emergency situation. Thank you very much. Yeah. We're standing in front of the National Ministry of Defense booth here at ADEX. On display are three unmanned surface vehicles. One from LID Next One, another from Hanwha, and a third from ADD. The one from LID Next One is called the Seesaw 2. The one from ADD is called the M Sortor. And the one from Hama does not yet have a name. These unmanned surface vehicles will be used for reconnaissance but can be modified to a wide range of mission sets. Although the MND has not yet provided specifications for the program, um, many realize that. USDs are things that are required in a modern Navy, which is why these three different organizations have independently put out prototypes. Another thing that's displayed here at the booth is the, the Capstone. The Capstone was released in 2015 for civilian purposes. It is hoped that the Capstone can be used for military purposes as well, including uh, anti-mine laying operations and search and rescue. by Lieutenant Commander Peterson. He's going to give us a brief overview of the aircraft you see behind us. Can you explain to us what the capabilities of this aircraft are and uh, what it was designed to do? Sure, it's an all-weather, multi-mission shipboard helicopter. It works on the anti-surface and anti-submarine missions. It can determine you know, what's out there in a patch of ocean and to gather you know, information on whatever we find. Right, right. Uh, could you give us more information about how many, like, um, what, what, what its specific loadout is in terms of like sensors or like how many people it can carry, etc., etc.? 
We usually fly with two pilots and a crewman. We have a number of different sensors. We can carry uh, Hellfire missiles or torpedoes or uh, crew serve weapons as required by the mission configuration. Right, right. And, um, and what's its top speed? How, how quick can it go? Uh, it depends who's flying it. <laughs> I see, I see. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. All right, thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you so good. much. We're joined by Lieutenant Lake today. He's going to explain to us uh, the aircraft that you see behind me, the PA Poseidon. Thank you for joining us today. Yep, thank you, uh, thank you for interviewing me. So uh, the P-8 aircraft is primarily focused on anti-submarine warfare and anti-surface warfare. Uh, it's the newer version of the P-3 Orion, uh, so it's taking over that same mission set. Uh, the advantages of the P-8 over the P-3 are that it can fly faster, uh, and so it can cover further distances uh, while covering the same mission. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we are able to carry harpoons, we're able to carry torpedoes in the weapons bay, um, and that will that helps us with uh, accomplishing those two mission sets. Um, uh, if I may ask you an additional question, um, how much more capable do you think the P-8 is compared to its predecessor? Um, it's hard to say because I'm not very familiar with the P-3. Mm -hmm. I initially trained on the P-8 myself, so I'm not intimately familiar with the P-3's capabilities, so I don't know that I would be able to comment on that. Right, right, uh, right. But, so I'm more just familiar with what we can do. But, right, I see, I see. And, um, so this platform is predominantly designed to be an anti-submarine warfare platform, right? Um, so how would it go about doing that? Would it drop buoys into the ocean? And um, and, bait, and sonar and stuff like that? Yeah, it'll, it drops sonar buoys. Uh, we have some sonar buoy launch tubes in the back of the aircraft, uh, so we're able to drop sonar buoys in the water. And then if the submarine were to surface, we would also uh, be able to see it with our camera or our eyes, um, just out the window, honestly. Uh, so there's a few options there for finding the submarine. I see, I see. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, absolutely. We're joined by Captain Volta in front of the aircraft that he flies. Could you tell our audience the capabilities of the aircraft you fly and what it's designed to do? Yeah, so I fly the attack helicopter H1 Zulu Cobra. Uh, it's designed to do just that, it attacks. So it carries rockets, guns, and missiles. Uh, it's the premier platform for close air support, deep air support, any sort of offensive air support that you require, the Cobra can do it. So what type of armaments does it usually carry on a regular mission? So like uh, a general mission outlet, at yeah. like a general mission like loadout, what would yeah. that be? So that'll be our 20 mil uh, on the nose of the gun, a uh, 20 mil gun, and then we also carry rockets and usually Hellfire missiles with us. But uh, the loadout itself varies based off the mission set, but you can usually expect us to carry at least gun, rockets, and missiles. And missiles. So would you predominantly operate this aircraft from uh, amphibious assault ships? Uh, that's one of the ways we operate it. We can also operate it from austere uh, conditions on land as well, or from an airfield as well. Right, so right. Uh, it's pretty versatile as far as where you can actually land it and operate it from. Right. And, and one last question. Mm -hmm. um, between the Apache and the aircraft that you fly, which do you think is better, oh, this in your air, opinion? This aircraft is way better than any, right. any other rotary aircraft. Right. Uh, is there like a personal reason why you would say that? Or? Uh, well, it, it's... In my opinion, more capable. Uh, I know for a fact that uh, it can outperform the Apache in some aspects. The Apache might be a little bit bigger, uh, but we pack just as much of a punch as they do. So uh, I definitely would favor this aircraft over most others. Right. Thank you very much yeah. for your time. Yeah, thank you. All right, we're joined by Captain Bell. He's going to explain to us the capabilities of the aircraft you see behind us. Could, could well, this, yep. Absolutely. This is uh, the UH-1 Yankee, which is otherwise known as the Huey. It's a fully capable utility helicopter. It can provide uh, assault support, escort, uh, personnel transportation, amongst uh, various other uh, number of tasks that's assigned to it. Uh, it's fully capable day or night in all weather operations, and uh, we're capable of... Uh, combined operations, joint operations, and maritime operations as well. Sorry, Mike. Um, could you talk, about, talk to us about perhaps the aircraft's top speed or how many troops it can carry, stuff along those lines as well? Yeah, it can carry um, 
uh, about a dozen or so, uh, a little bit less than that. Um, top speeds are um, unclassified as on the internet is about 200 knots on our uh, information that we provide. Yeah. Right, right. Thank you very much. Absolutely. All right, we're joined by uh, Mr. Lieutenant Choi, and um, he's going to explain to us about the aircraft you see behind me. Can you just just briefly give us an explanation of what this aircraft is? Yes, MV-22 is, is a unique platform uh, to find both multi-engine aircraft and helicopter. So we land and take off like a helicopter, but we, we fly like a multi-engine aircraft. So we can go higher and faster and further than helicopter, but we can we cannot carry more than helicopter. So we might lose some capability of lifting, but we can carry we can go further and faster. That's a that's a that's the main advantage of having uh, B-22. So, uh, what would you say is the top speed of this aircraft? You say one of the advantages is that it's faster than normal helicopters, right? right, right. Like so, by how much? Yeah, so it's, it's about twice as fast as normal helicopters. So, about max airspeed is at 262 uh, nautical miles per hour. Right, right, right. And um, in terms of the amount of um, ordinance it can carry, or, amount, or the number of troops it can carry. You said that it's not as great as a regular helicopter, but then, yes. it, but then how, 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 how what, what would you say the capabilities of the aircraft yes, yes, are yeah. in that regard? Yeah, so, um, so, so, so CH-57 uh, can carry more troops. We, we can only carry about 24 troops, mm -hmm. so one and a half squads. Um, as far as weapons, we can, uh, we can put the uh, 50 cal machine gun by the ramp. So that's that's the only weapon system that we have on the aircraft. Right, right. Yeah. So so 24 troops and just a 50 count machine gun on the back. Right. Thank you very much for your time.